Hello everyone and welcome to Black Ops 3 for Dummies. In today's episode we'll be covering the Domination Game Mode and be sure to stay tuned to the end of the video because I have a rant I'm going to go on about people who play Domination and uh, that ought to be fun, so let's get to it. Domination is one of the most basically simple game modes, yet strategically complex game modes in the game. The basics, like I said, are very simple. There are three flags on the map, A, B, and C. You get points for holding a flag, you get more points for holding two flags, you get more still for holding three flags. The way it works is you get one point every second for each flag that you own. Uh, it takes 10 seconds to capture a flag by yourself, it takes 5 seconds to capture a flag with a teammate, and it gets shorter after that. You get 100 points per kill, 200 points per flag captured, and 125 points, I believe, for defending a flag or getting a kill while capturing a flag. If you own A flag and they own C flag, you will spawn near A flag, they will spawn near C flag, and if you own all three flags, then they will be spawning all over the map. That will become important during the strategic portion of the video. The game does not have a time limit. It will last for two halves of 100 points each. So the first team to get to 100 points will have the lead at halftime. The first team to get to 200 points will win in the second half. At, each, at the halftime, the spawns will flip, the flags will all be neutral again, and you will start as though the game is new, except for the score will be changed. If you're coming from Advanced Warfare, one major change that was made between Advanced Warfare and Black Ops 3 is that you cannot neutralize a flag now. The only time a flag will be neutral is at the beginning of the half once it is owned, it can only change hands, it cannot be neutralized again. So if you're going to capture a flag, be sure that you can actually capture it because getting halfway through does you no good. Now when it comes to strategy, the strategy of domination is simple in concept, but kind of hard to pull off. The team that wins domination is the team that controls B flag. So what you want to do is you want to capture your flag and B flag, and then you want to spread your guys out all over the map to spawn trap the opponent at their flag. You don't want to push too far in or else the spawns will flip and they'll be spawning back at your home base. And you certainly do not want to triple cap because then they'll be spawning all over the place because they have no home flag to spawn near. So you want to make sure that you hold two flags but only triple cap if the game absolutely requires it. Like the only way for you to win is to hold all three flags. When it comes to capturing a flag the best way to do it is make sure that you have somebody there with you. Each flag has multiple routes to it. Some are easier to triple cap or single cap than others, but it's never a good idea to try and single cap a flag. However, on maps like Breach, like we have here, you'll notice that B flag only has two entrances to it. And so if they're spawning at a flag, you can guess that they're going to come in through this entrance. If they're spawning at C flag, you can guess they're coming in through that entrance. And you really only have one direction to really watch out for. So B flag on evac is actually pretty easy to, to single cap. The C flag on breach, rather not evac, is nearly impossible to solo cap. And the reason is you look at it and there is no cover anywhere. You are 100% out in the open. There is nothing protecting you. You have to watch this direction, this direction, this direction, this direction, this direction, this direction, every direction to make sure that you don't get killed. And you have to do that for 10 seconds while sitting in the enemy spawn. So it's a very bad idea to ever try and triple cap that one, when or solo cap that one. When you're trying to solo cap, you need to make sure you are aware of what's going on around you. You know which flags have enough cover. And frankly, if you have more than two directions of vulnerability at the flag, you probably shouldn't be trying to solo cap it at all. As far as class setups are concerned, the weapons are kind of your personal preference. I personally like to go with weapons that are better up close but decent mid-range like the CUDA or, or KN-44, things like that. Uh, use whatever attachments you feel comfortable with. I usually like to use at least one magazine attachment, whether it's extended mags or fast mags. For your perks, uh, the only perks I think are really necessary are dead silence and awareness, which I think are necessary for literally 
literally any game mode. And I really like Six Sense for uh, for domination because if you're capturing, like, let's go back to Breach. If you're capturing B flag, you can actually sit in a corner here and be told exactly where the enemy's coming from based on what your six sense is doing. And then I also really like Hardwired because people use trip mines and shock charges constantly in domination. And also, it's the counter to Six Sense, which I just identified as a really good perk for Domination. As far as your specialist is concerned, you want to use area of effect specialists. Like, I uh, use the Gravity Spikes is probably my personal favorite. The Purifier is also really good. Heat Wave is a really good one. But I would avoid things like the Annihilator or the Sparrow, which is more of a precision type weapons because uh, you're going to find yourself in close range engagements with multiple enemies too often for weapons like that to really be effective unless you're playing the role of the slayer just sitting back in your spawn sniping everybody. As far as score streaks are concerned, there are really three score streaks that I think stand out above the rest as the best domination of score streaks. First is the sentry turret. Because you can place a sentry turret on any lane and lock down that lane. We talked about spawn trapping earlier. Sentry turret makes it to where you only have to worry about two lanes when trying to spawn trap. Or if you're playing solo, you can just set a sentry turret up overlooking one of your objectives. And it'll be very, very difficult for the enemy to capture that objective. My next favorite is the Cerberus. And the thing that's great about the Cerberus is... If you drop it on a flag and then just let it roam around, that flag is pretty much locked down. It's a really good one. It's basically, I would use it like a, a mobile sentry turret as opposed to a stationary sentry turret. And the last one is the Talon. The Talon is fantastic for a rusher in domination you can cap you can solo cap any flag if you have a talon watching your back again don't control the talon just let it follow you around and defend you you'll notice in these gameplays i use the talon a lot and it's very helpful when trying to capture flags especially open flags like uh b on combine or c on breach things like that you can actually solo cap those flags if you have a talent overhead. Now there are two different play styles for domination and each of them is equally important and you need at least one on each of these on your team. And these two play styles seem to be at odds with each other. Uh, people who play one style hate people who play the other. So I'm going to cover each play style and then we'll launch into the rant. The first one is the objective player. The guy who is looking to capture the objectives all the time. He's the one who's not going to worry about his KDR, not care too much about getting high score streaks, and ultimately just try to finish the game with as many captures as possible. The other is the defender, and the defender is the guy who, or, you know, more commonly called Slayer, I guess. The Slayer is the guy who kind of roams around near objectives but not on objectives kind of in the place where you don't expect someone to be but still in a useful spot and picks up lots of kills he's the guy who is going to get your sentry turret your cerberus and your talons and things like that and he's looking to end the game with the highest kdr possible he's looking to end the game with the most kills in the lobby and doesn't really care a whole lot about captures and again, you don't want to triple cap anyway. Truly, Truth be told, the perfect game of domination ends with your team scoring 200 and their team scoring 100 because the entire game, you hold two flags and they hold one and you spawn trap them. Now, people who play the objective will look at people who end the game with 100 plus kills and a super high KDR with no captures as not playing the objective and they accuse them of playing team deathmatch in domination and they constantly talk about how it's not impressive to kill people when those people's main objective isn't to kill you back and all of those things and the slayer's defense is i'm calling in score streaks and i'm defending objectives and and things like that now the truth is you can be a slayer you can you can be the most important player on your team and not have a single capture if you're playing Slayer correctly. A lot of people don't play Slayer correctly, however. You'll, you'll pull back up Breach here. You'll see people over in this area or this area that aren't near any flag, just killing people right and left, just patrolling this building that isn't really doing any good. You're not defending a flag. Like, the truth is, you're not really helping your team there, and you can get 200 kills 
in one of these spots and not win the game. It's gotten to the point where objective players will look at who has the most kills and just assume that that person isn't helping the team very much because a lot of times they aren't. The tr The point is you have to be in a spot like up here, up here, overlooking a flag and actually defending something and actually doing something, having your kills mean something to the team. A, a slayer could have 40 kills and mean more to his team than a slayer who has 200. It's if you want to go play for your nuclear, fine. Just understand that that's what you're doing. Don't try and defend what you're doing as helping the team. And at the same time, the objective players seem to think that you can go 5 and 20, and if you have the most caps in your lobby, you're helping your team the most, when in fact, an objective player can ruin a game of domination. If your slayers have the map controlled, and you have two flags, they have one flag, you spawn trap them, and everything's going great, and then you have somebody on, their t on your team who's like, I'm gonna play the objective, and he goes and jumps on the other flag... All you're doing is releasing them from the spawn trap, and you're actually doing more harm than good for your team. You can actually end up losing a game of domination because you go for a triple cap at a really bad time. So just jumping on any old flag is never good. And also, you can pretend that you're playing the objective all you want by jumping on flags and getting killed. And then you say, yeah, I only got 5 kills and 20 deaths, but I was playing the objective at least. But really, you're not playing the objective. What you're doing is you're handing the enemy kills and you're giving them score streaks that make it even more difficult to actually play the objective. You need both playstyles to work together in harmony. You need, you know, your objective guy wants to capture B, he needs a slayer watching his back. Now, the slayer, you can use a talon as a slayer, as a slayer but if you're getting a talon, odds are you're probably winning the game anyway because you're having a good game. But, uh... You know, all this business of, well, you're doing this, you're not playing the objective, or you're doing that, so you're just feeding the enemy score streaks and everything else. Like, people need to understand that both of these roles are vital to domination. You won't win if everybody on your team is just rushing every flag you don't own, and you certainly won't win if nobody on your team is jumping on a flag because they're that interested in getting their kills. So thanks for listening and watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Domination is the second most popular game mode in Call of Duty. Team Deathmatch is basically the casual game mode where people will just group up with friends and and hang out and and just kind of shoot the breeze, turn off their surround sound and just have fun. Domination is the same type of thing except for tryhards who really want to win the game and do well. If you're a noob, I suggest going to Team Deathmatch. If you're a little bit more advanced and you're looking for more of a challenge, Domination is probably a better game mode for you. If you haven't played it, go ahead and try it out. It is actually a lot of fun. And goodbye.